name is Alex Bainey. And I'm Todd Vanderwill. I'm Steve Stricker. The, the three of us had the opportunity to be involved in Fulton County Leadership Academy, uh, class of 2023. Um, as part of our project, we wanted to highlight three nonprofits in Fulton County and uh, what they do for the community. So the one that I chose is CASA, or Court-Appointed uh, Special Advocates for Fulton County. Um, we had the opportunity to sit down with Sherry Shepard and Jenny Smith, one of the volunteers, um, to talk about what they do for this community. Sherry came and presented um, in the Leadership Academy, and it, it was very meaningful what she presented to the, the group. Um, so you can see what, what she said here on this next video. Thank you. Jenny Smith, CASA. Sherry Shepard, Executive Director of CASA. And uh, with FCLA, Fulton, Co Fulton County Leadership Academy, we have to come up with a project. So our project this year was uh, to allow the opportunity for non three nonprofits to kind of highlight their services and um, give them a moment to talk about themselves. So first, uh, Sherry and Jennifer, tell us what uh, um, what's CASA stand for. Well, CASA is Court Appointed <laughs> Special Advocates, and it is a nonprofit group that is run in... Uh, 80 out of 80 the 90? out of 92 counties okay. in Indiana. In Indiana. So it is nationwide, but in, it is in the vast majority of counties in Indiana. And that court appointed special advocates is just what it sounds like. We are appointed through the court to advocate for the needs of children. Okay. And uh, and I guess who are the clients that you help typically? It's a loaded question. It huh? is. Um, our our main focus is on the children from birth to at least 18 years of age. Some of them are up to 21 years of age. Okay, okay, so you can see these kiddos for a long, long period, uh, you know, if they start out really young. Yes, um, usually our cases last a year and a half, two years, basically, though we do have one case that has been ongoing for 13 years. My goodness. So uh, the, the people that help you out, Sherry, are, are, are they volunteers? Are they paid? How does that all work? They are volunteers. Um, and this is my plug for our advocates because they are the most awesome group of individuals from all walks of life that give up their time selflessly. And if I need something, they are there to jump in and help me on a case or whatever I need. Well, we are very blessed to have Sherry as our leader <laughs> because we were mentioning earlier that I think that she has one of the toughest leadership positions because to corral volunteers uh, you don't have the same levers that you can pull if you are in a leader within an organization where your people mm -hmm. are paid. So Sherry works so very hard within the community in often unseen ways because um, the people that she is helping are really by definition marginalized. And so Sherry does take a lot of the a lot of CASA directors, you know, the point is not to have any of their own cases, but Sherry often, due to the size of our county and also the um, level of volunteers, takes cases mm -hmm. rather than just not have them be assigned and she then has the most difficult ones usually the ones that are out of county where she's mm -hmm. traveling and those kinds of things and does that as part of her job as well as trying to coordinate volunteers so she does an excellent job doing Thank you. we do um, fun things like have dinners um, but also the ongoing education part is a really important part of being a CASA and as part of what we sign on to is we say we will do 12 hours a year and so Sherry does an excellent job alerting us of what those are. Um, since COVID they've done a nice job of making more virtual options which is helpful especially for people who may be volunteers but have um, another job or their own kids at home or something like that so we have that and and a variety of options, but that's important to make sure that that we as CASAs are kept up to date on what court proceedings are and also to prove, you know, just how valuable our services can be in court because we save the court a lot. We save our county a lot of money. Actually, the state of Indiana, um, from the advocates that are appointed to CASA children, the Chins cases, I think last year. Um, all the CASA programs in Indiana state, saved the state of Indiana a little over $4.6 million. And that's because if you, if, when a child is, is educated in the court as a CHINS, or Child in Need of Services, that's what that acronym is, that then the court must appoint an advocate for the child. So sometimes, and even with our clients, we're often confused with DCS, or the Department of Child Services. 
we work together with them, but we are completely separate in the eyes of the court. So the DCS has very strict guidelines and rules on what the path of the case can be. They are primarily there to focus on reunification, and they do that with a lot of supportive services for the parents. Um, so we are obviously in contact with the parents. Mm -hmm. They're an important part of the case, but our primary focus is the child. So it's most important that we are seeing the child, working with the child, checking in, um, depending upon the age of the child, with the child's caregivers or school. Um, but we then, a DCS has their part. We are appointed by the judge. If a CASA is not appointed, someone does need to be appointed, and that's usually what is called a GAL attorney. So then they're paying an attorney to do the job that we do. Um, and that's not an inexpensive proposition to have an attorney be the one that's going and no, visiting the child and advocating for the child. Right. So, Jenny, you're a full-time, you know, you work full-time and, and you also volunteer. So talk about the process and, and how you manage, uh, you know, if somebody at home is, is saying, okay, you know, I, I've got a full-time job, but, you know, this sounds interesting to me. This is something that maybe I want to do. Uh, how do they go about doing that and, and how do you manage, you know, both of those things? Oh, that's a great question. It really, it's a, a way of prioritizing and also working with your employer. So I have a couple different positions and one of them is here and they do a good job of giving me a lot of flexibility if I have court. Um, it, it does require coordination because sometimes when we can meet with the child or meet with DCS in the, the meetings that we have together, is not dictated primarily by our schedule. So it does make it hard for people who would be in maybe a traditional full-time job where they punch in it at a certain at time and punch out at a certain time um, to do that. But I do think that a lot of employers are seeing the value in having their employees and volunteering in the community. And so reaching out and um, asking for that flexibility really can help. Mm -hmm. So um, how, would, how would somebody go about, uh, you know, if, if they're interested, how would you go about, you know, starting that process? We have a, uh, a web page, and also they could uh, email me at casafaltonclanny2 at rtcol.com or stop by the office located at 420 Main Street. Okay. And uh, what, what does uh, someone that volunteers with you, I mean, you talked about, you're kind of substituting sometimes for what you know a lawyer would do, but you don't have to have a law degree, obviously, to do this. Correct. Yeah, so. you do not have to have a degree to be a CASA volunteer. Yeah, it's a really big heart, right? Yeah. Very big heart. <laughs> it's an emotional yes. position. We get very attached. Yeah, that is to the that children. Is really we get very attached to them, and some of the parents as well. But mm -hmm. it's very fulfilling too, because it is a way. Um, you know, I can't speak to other counties, but I know in our county that it, it currently is Judge Lee that handles almost all of uh, these particular cases. And he is very uh, receptive to what CASAs have to say. And so when there's court, we have a court report, which I hope that doesn't scare anyone from, from choosing to volunteer because they're not, he says specifically, I don't want it to look like DCSs. Again, DCS it has to have very specific things, specific wording. He wants it to be a conversation. Tell him, you know, in writing what you are thinking about this case. And so that is very fulfilling. I, um, my case right now, I do have some older children, but in general I have babies or young children that do not um, often talk on their own, so I get to know caregivers really well, whether that's a placement where they may be or, they're, if they're, or their parents or both. And so developing those relationships, especially uh, maybe with people you're not necessarily hanging out with on Saturday night, are, are very important, I think, for the growth of the community as a whole. So I just, yeah, to be a volunteer, you need to have somebody who has a little bit of time and someone who cares about kids. And um, that's that's pretty yeah. much it. Sherry will teach you everything else you need to know. Yeah. <laughs> Even though I am the first to admit I probably at times care a little too much <laughs> for the kids. And, and sometimes I have to be reined back in, but that's okay. <laughs> I mean, that's what makes you a good leader for this program, right? So, yeah. So, uh, you know, earlier we were talking, um, what are some of the frustrations that you have uh, with uh, either the funding or um, the cases? So our funding, um, it revolves two years back from our state office. And last year, 
the funding really was not there because there was a lack of detainments. That's what our funding is based on, is the lack of detain or the number of detainments. We're really not seeing a lot of detainments anymore just because policies and law has changed so much. There's service providers that can be put in to keep the family intact so we don't have to remove children, but when you see a number of children that really need someone to step in and help and that help is not being provided to them, it's very frustrating, very heartbreaking. Is that something that you see a lot of? Because you, know, you, you see a situation where you're like, okay, maybe this um, child needs to be removed and they're not getting that help. Do you see that quite a bit? Yes, yeah. we do. Yeah. So it's, that's, that's probably one of your major frustrations there. It is. There. Yeah. And that's where uh, probably caring a little too much yeah. comes in because it's like, seriously, why are you not stepping in and helping this? Well, we didn't have enough proof or we don't have X, Y, and Z, so there's nothing we can do. Mm -hmm. I go the wrong way, though. <laughs> <laughs> like I could really do something. So it, it is. You... So I did mention, you know, we don't have the same sort of policies that DCS have. And so in speaking with the judge, that is a lot more freeing, right? Um, and at the same time, we don't, we, our cases do revolve around what policies DCS sets. And so as Sherry said, yeah, this is my seventh year as a CASA and, and policies within DCS as well as some laws related to it have changed to allow less detainments, which, um, I think has good intentions because it is very traumatic to remove children from their home. Mm -hmm. I think also it can have some really unintended consequences mm -hmm. that are not positive because sometimes the trauma of removing someone from the home is far better than them remaining in the home. And um, DCS is an un underfunded agency. You know, they're advertising right now for new. Um, family case managers, which is the base level that we would work with. And it, the state of Indiana is offering about $48,000 a year for that. And you need a master's degree to do that. So uh, as far as funding, I would like to see more funding um, for that service to be able to relieve some of the extra burdens that are on our FCMs. And then I think that helps in having the best practices for all of our, our kids. So there's like in most uh, issues in life, there's the global and then there's the more local. So there's what we can do and what we mm -hmm. can do is go in and advocate for our cases, for our, our kids that we have and be, and we are very thankful that we have a judge that listens to that and, and takes that into account when he's making his decisions too. I could anticipate, you know, the, the beginning stages of um, these kiddos and, and finding that they might be problems at home or problems uh, uh, elsewhere happen in the school so with uh, with the way that COVID affected the school in the last two years talk about that a little bit how did that impact um, what you guys do potentially the numbers that um, you guys had um, for the year of 2020 the numbers really dropped due to we did not have eyes on all these children they could log in virtually they may stay on camera they may not they may not log in at all so there, well, probably for two years, I would say, we did not have eyes on these children. So what was going on behind the scene, no one really knew because we didn't have the teachers or the nurses or whoever that kind of know these children's history and could look at them and go, mm, something's not right. That was all taken away, so. And you are right. The, another hat that I serve on is I have uh, on the Rochester Community School Board. And that is something that we have talked about for years, is that the, the advocacy that our staff has for our kids is amazing. They are the ones that see them every day. They see mm -hmm. them eight hours a day. I do know sometimes there's, I mean, to be completely honest, frustrations with the department because a, a DCS worker coming in to evaluate is going to see that child for a short amount of time by nature of what they're doing, mm -hmm. where a teacher is seeing that child all the time. Um, so we we work hard to have partnerships in that way, but it, to have the best environment for the children, it is important that you know they have some loving adults around them, and that includes our staff. To have to give a real shout out to our staff, we have staff that literally have become foster parents because of a need within their own classroom, and have children that they are taking care of as fosters. 
So, and we have some staff that we have some teachers that are, are CASAs, so yep. working a full time job and and being a CASA. And Sherry does an excellent job when she's assigning those cases because it's the judge that technically assigns it. But Sherry's going to work to make the best fit of what CASA she thinks would be the best fit with this family. And so she works very hard. And this is tough in a small community, but she's always been able to do it in in my situation at least to match you with someone that you don't know because. It, going in as a CASA and not knowing the family is is the best situation so that you can remain as neutral and as advocating for the um, child as possible. So even though we have teachers, she's able to match yeah. them. But some of our families, kids. unfortunately, are well known around our community and not a positive light. And those do get a little difficult to yeah. assign. I Some of them, they are so well known that it's, yeah. Sometimes I wish I had volunteers from outside of our county where they do not know mm -hmm. as much mm -hmm. about our families or our county and they can come in with fresh eyes. And so, yeah, and you don't have to live in our county to be a CASA volunteer for us. So you can, you can come in from, from, from a different other, county. Yeah. Yep. So maybe if you live in southern Marshall County or northern Cass County or yep. something like that. You it works out to, wonderfully. Yeah. And that might that might work better for for a volunteer as well to to maybe have a fresh set of eyes for you. Yep. So it you know I think when we had um, the United Way folks in here the other day we were talking um, it takes a village you know it truly does and you know you guys are part of that village and and you know the school the courts and you guys kind of working together to to try and make this work it's. Uh, it's pretty interesting when you dig down into it and see how those things work and and how uh, you know there's a lot of people involved in, in trying to make things go we just appreciate you guys and, and the program and CASA and everything they do it's uh, you know all part of our little village here in Fulton County thank you thank you thank you for having us yeah thank you Sherry Jenny thank you guys for again coming and talking about CASA